This is the podcast. Please go away. It's almost Halloween. Yeah, all the time for trick or treat. This is the podcast. Please go away. Now it's time to sink your teeth into the podcast. Halloween special. Windy weather sends chills through the night. You have to watch your back or the monster seems to strike. Children run through and through, looking for the neighbor who will give them the biggest pull. The nights howl with the wolves, who come out in shape shapes to conform with the Halloween rules. Then here comes Jason and the Boogeyman, two who both happen to love a common fool. As the clock strikes midnight, this is the time when things are no longer right. Hide your kids and hide your wives as the candy man prays on the next victim in spite. This Halloween night will have kids in fright, terrified to attempt to close their eyes at night. Twizzlers, chocolates, and candy corn. If you don't bring him candy, he'll wish you were never born. Lemon heads, lily pops, and flavored gum. No matter how far you run, you always hear that dreadful hum. When the candy man hums his eerie tone, you didn't give him good candy, you're a buffoon. When it comes to the candy man, no one is immune. So please hear us, so the candy man does not visit soon. Welcome to the Crystal Ray Podcast Halloween Special. <laughs> this is Jade. What you just heard was an original poem performed by the podcast one and only Jaleel. Here's Jaleel to explain how it was created. So, Candyman the Poem was put together by me and a couple of last year's singers, and Miss Capsch helped edit it inside of it with all the sound effects. We had a marketing team, um, an awesome editing team, and a really good poem team, and um, it was just awesome. It was a great experience, and um, most of the writing was done by uh, myself and a couple of other past singers. Yeah, it was awesome to put together and dig deep and be fun and creative inside of the different voices and things like that, so, yeah. It's Ujwo. I'm in choir class, and we've been practicing Halloween things. We brought a microphone into the rehearsal. Come and take a listen. Brian, and we're doing our daily like warm up, we basically stretching and then you know exercising before you know we get the sink. I'm Kirsty, and we're stretching so that we can prepare our bodies to sing and improve our sound and loosen up. And now, after these stretches, we do breathing exercises. So one, two, three, and here you go. And out. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All your feet on my knee. Yeah, get rid of it all. It starts off with eight, but eventually we go up to 12, 16, and then lastly, 24. It starts off really difficult, but then after a while, Practice makes persistence. In for four, and out for 24. One, two, three, then three to go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, halfway, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. You made it. All right, no, you still have some in air. Four, out for 256. Okay. All right, 256. You guys ready? Yes. <laughs> but we didn't join choir just to breathe. Here are some of our vocal exercises. Even 
in with just the warm-ups. Ms. Capsh gives us lots of feedback on how we're doing and how to improve. All together. One, two, three, sing. Sing. There you go. That N G is what you're looking for. That sing. Sing. The kind of you can almost feel the same tickle that you feel in your nose. We do the. You can almost feel that same tickle for the sing that you feel for that same for that other form up. Uh, so go ahead and try that for me one more time. Take the sing. Now, some of these might sound weird out of context, but in the end, they do help us. That was just the easy part. Now it gets really complicated. Don't see how so funny. Don't see how so funny. Don't see how so funny. But as you go down that scale, we're going to do just the downward version. I kind of tried to spit it out really quick in one of those breaths. Um, think up as you go down the scale. Because our tendency is we know we're going to go down that scale. So our tendency is to like sit on those notes a little too much. And they start to, to slide downwards. And they start to sink and go flat. So I want you to think upwards. No. 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 Think uh, like you're almost sitting on top of that note instead of letting it fall all the way down. Because then we start going flat the further we go down the scale. So you just start all the way back down. No. One, two, here you go. No. Two, three, and no. think up. Our first song is The Ghost of John. We've been practicing this for a while now. Miss Capsh is always giving us feedback on everything we say. Sometimes we make mistakes. Actually, it's kind of a lot. See, this is why her feedback is so valuable. Well, now let's take a listen to the actual song. Hopefully we don't have any mistakes this time. Have you seen the ghost of John? The white bones with the skin of God. Ooh, 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 ooh. Wouldn't it be chilly with no skin on? Have you seen the ghost of Hey, Nigel. Hey, Icy. 
Want to know what's really scary? What? Bullying. Ah! October is National Bullying Prevention Month. So let's hear from some Chris Ray students on how to stay about bullying for good. Hello, I'm Dominique from Miss Vallejo's Advisory, and we all have something to say about bullying. If you're being bullied, do not be afraid to reach out to your peers. Talk to someone you trust. Hello, if you're being bullied, make a long-lasting statement that makes someone to stop. Bullying is really bad, and I feel that it damages people's inner and outer personality. It can really hurt someone. It should not happen. Cool people don't bully. If you see someone being bullied, tell a teacher or someone you know. Seek a guidance counselor. Talk to them, ask how you can help, and listen without judgment. <laughs> if you're a bully, leave bullying to bulls. Seek help from a friend or an adult. If you know someone being bullied, you should encourage them to tell an adult. If you are a bully, you should consider the consequences and seek help. If you're being bullied, please just tell someone. Um, if you are a bully, just stop. Mr. Rose here. We all must be vigilant. So if you see something, say something. Don't stand by, take action. We are all in this together. here in a guitar class. Actually, me, Jaleel, and Ava are also in this guitar class. So we can personally tell you that this song that we're about to play called the, Where the Red Fern Grows has taken a lot of time for us, dedication, as we are all beginners in this class. And it's been really fun to work with Mrs. Catch. We brought a mic into one of our rehearsals and here is a senior Brenda. Oh, hi, my name is Brenda, and basically I'm tuning the guitar, so like each string needs to like, needs to show the check mark, and if it doesn't, I have to like adjust it so it could sound right. <laughs> After tuning our guitar, the next thing we do in guitar class is practicing on the new chords Ms. Couch has given us. So my name is Jackie and I'm in guitar class right now. So basically uh, we're learning how to strum um, E minor and C minor and D minor and D minor chords. So if you look here, um, we just learned some new strum styles, okay? So I'm going to do, I'm going to put my hand right here and play E minor. And we're playing the um, some portion from the Ed Sheeran song. So... And then I'm going to go to C minor. And then G minor. And then D minor. That's what we're learning in the class. So after tuning and practicing our new chords, Miss Capch makes us always practice together so she can give us the feedback we need. We've split into three different groups, and within each group, we've been practicing on our own without Mrs. Couch. Yeah, you see that big yeah. stage is two, three, four, but when you see like the small bits in between, it's one. I'm confused. Two. Some of us, some of us going on four. Some of us going on four. Some of us going on two. After we practice on our own, Miss Couch comes to give us feedback and gives us notes on what we need to improve. Three, three, four. Instead of so, let it ring for the whole entire time instead of stopping it. So, okay. All right. So you, you hear the different sound kind of stop it. Here's Umar explaining how we split the song into three different groups and why is it crucial and important that each person plays their own part because, as you can see, all three parts will be played together to make one composed song. Hi, my name is Umar. I'm going to be playing the Red Fern Girls, the third section. All you got to do is just look at the sheet 
Um, it tells you where to put your fingers, uh, what section, what string, all this stuff, how to hold it. So there's uh, three different sections yeah, like that we're playing guitar, uh, guitar in, and that's because uh, each section has like different tones and paces and beats, and it'd be impossible for one person, like one group, to do all of that because it's all happening at the same time. So we have to split it into equal sections where people, each person has a different tempo or sound. Uh, different parts. So after all of my explanations, I hope you love what you hear and here is where the red fern grows from Mrs. Cap's guitar class. <laughs> Lafresweilerham, Miss O'Connell, and Miss Vallejo. Miss Lafresweilerham, will you explain to me the Catholic connection of Halloween, please? Sure. So, to understand the Catholic connection to Halloween, we first have to look at the day after Halloween, which in the Catholic Church we call All Saints Day. This is actually a really old holiday in the Catholic Church. It dates back to the fourth century as a way of honoring the martyrs in the Catholic Church, the people who died for their faith, and the people who we believe are already in heaven with God. But the day before that is re was referred to as All Hallows' Eve. Hollow meaning holy people. And so it's the evening of the holy people, the day before we celebrate all the holy people who are in heaven with God. So as time has gone on, that is now referred to as Halloween. Yeah, and to add on to that, we want to remember that uh, when we die, uh, Catholics believe that death is not actually the end. So all of the holy men and women who have come before us want us to join them in heaven. So they wanna, they're cheering us on, they're praying for us. So when we celebrate Halloween, sometimes it's helpful to remember thousands and thousands and thousands of men and women who have lived on this earth, who have lived life and know how hard it is, are right there with us, cheering us on. Think of it like cheerleaders. So when we go to celebrate Halloween, it might be helpful to find someone who is like you, who you can relate to, that you can basically invite to be on your team or to be your cheerleader as we walk through life. Okay, so Ms. Vallejo, um, so All Saints Day happens on November 1st, as well as Day of the Dead. Can you tell me some information about Day of the Dead? Mm -hmm. Yes, of course. Thank you for asking, Eva. Uh, the Day of the Dead, it's a Mexican and Mexican-American holiday. And uh, this uh, brings together two different cultures, the culture of Spain and the All Saints Day, and uh, the Mexican culture, which is celebrated on November 1st. Usually we uh, think about all the children that passed away on November 1st, and then on November 2nd, people like to go and visit the cemeteries, decorate the, the tombs of their loved ones with uh, foods that they like, uh, papel picado, uh, the little skeletons made with sugar. It's a really, really special holiday uh, for us and for the uh, Mexican people and the American Mexican here in the United States. Thank you all for saying those things and helping all of us understand like the importance of the holiday surrounded by Halloween. All right, everybody, back to the show. Now, back in choir, we're doing this song called The Monster Mash. It has some pretty weird parts in it. Take a listen. Well, because no, the inner suits are different, uh, right? Because you have the whoa, inner suit, whoa, well, inner suit, whoa, inner suit, whoa, and then you have your back to your normal mode. Now, Miss Capsh wants us to put in a little bit of pizzazz. <laughs> Here we go, uh, with a little bit of personality. You have the personality, I know you do. 
Nice and loud. Can I read all of them? Can I read all of them? Here we go. Oh, 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 Practicing makes our voice go down and we sound different, but Miss Caption encourages us to sound our best each and every take. So, as you sing this song, though, it has to sound, and I know we've been rehearsing it a lot too, which takes me to work, right? It has to sound fresh every single time you do it. So, I can't let it sound like I'm so sick of singing, wow, like I can't do it one more time, right? This song has a soloist, he's Ethan. Let's hear what he has to say. Hello, I'm Ethan. I'm the soloist for the Monster Mash. Um, I don't know why, but I chose to do it because I wanted to have fun and sing the solo part. It seemed complicated and I wanted to do it. I thought I could do it too. And I am! So now, let's put it all together and hear the finished product. I was working in the lab. Late one night, when my eyes beheld an eerie sight, for my monster from a slab began to rise, and suddenly, to my surprise, he did the mash. He did the monster mash. The monster mash. It was a graveyard smash. He did the mash. It caught on in a flash. He did the mash. He did the monster mash wow. from a laboratory in the castle east. Wow. To the master bedroom where the vampires feast. Wow. The ghouls all came from their humble abodes to wow. get a jolt from my electrodes. They did the mash. They did the monster mash. The monster mash. It was a graveyard smash. They did the mash. It caught on in a flash. They did the mash. They did the monster mash. Wow. The zombies were having fun. Wow. The party had just begun. The guests included Wolfman, Dracula, and his son. The scene was rocking while we're digging the sounds. Igor on the chains backed by his baying hounds. The coffin bangers were about to arrive. With their vocal group, the Crypt Kicker Five. They played the mash. They played the monster mash. The monster mash. It was a graveyard smash. They played the mash. It caught on in a flash. They played the mash. They played the monster mash. Wow. Out of his coffin, Drax's voice did ring. Wow. He seemed troubled by just one thing. Wow. He opened the lid and shook his fist and said, wow. Whatever happened to my Transylvania twist? It's now the mash. It's now the monster mash. The monster mash. And it's a graveyard smash. It's now the mash. It caught on in a flash. It's now the mash. It's now the monster mash. Wow. Now everything's cool. Drag's part of the band. Wow. And the monster mash is the hit of the land. Wow. Wow. For the living, this mash was meant to. Wow. When you get to my door, tell them Boris sent you. Then you can mash. Then you can monster mash. The monster mash. And do my graveyard smash. Then you can mash. You'll catch on in a flash. Then you can mash. Then you can monster mash. Mm, mash again. Easy. Mm, mash again. This week in Miss Mass sophomore English class, we've been reading some spooky tales by Edgar Allan Poe. Now the Christopher Ray podcast presents our very own version of Edgar Allan Poe's most famous poem, The Raven, starring Jalil, Ujwal, and Alanga. Once upon a midnight jury, while I pondered weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded 
nearly napping. Suddenly there came a tapping, as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. Tis some visitor, I muttered, tapping at my chamber door. Only this and nothing more. Eagerly, I wished the morrow. Vainly, I had sought to borrow from my book's surcease of sorrow. Sorrow for the lost Lenore, from the rare and radiant maiden whom the angels named Lenore, nameless here forevermore. And the silken, sad, uncertain rustling of each purple curtain thrilled me, filled me with fantastic terrors never felt before, so that now, to still the beating of my heart, I stood repeating to some visitor entreating at my chamber door, some late visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door. This it is, and nothing more. Presently my soul grew stronger, hesitating, then no longer. Sir, said I, or madam, truly, your forgiveness I implore. But the fact is, I was napping, and so gently you came rapping, and so faintly you came tapping, tapping at my chamber door, that I scarce was sure I heard you. Here I opened wide the door. <coughs> Darkness there, and nothing more. Deep into the darkness, peering, long I stood there wondering, fearing, doubting, dreaming dreams, no mortal ever dared to dream before. But the silence was unbroken, and, and, and the darkness gave no token, and the only word there spoken was the whispered word, Lenore. This I whispered, and an echo murmured back the word, Lenore. Merely this, and nothing more back into the chamber, turning all my soul within me burning. Soon again I heard a tapping somewhat louder than before. Surely, said I, surely that is something in my window lattice. Let me see then what there at is, and this mystery explore. Let my heart be still a moment, and this mystery explore. Tis the wind, and nothing more. Open here I flung the shutter, when with many a flirt and flutter, and there stepped a stately raven of the saintly days of yore. Not the least obeisance made he, not a minute stopped or stayed he, but with mien of lord or lady. Perched above my chamber door, perched upon a bust of palace, just above my chamber door, perched, set, and nothing more. Then this ebony bird, beguiling my sad fancy into smiling, by the grave and stern decorum of the continents it wore. Though thy crest be shorn and shaven, Thou, I said, art sure no craven, ghastly, grim, and ancient raven, wandering from the nightly shore. Tell me what thy lordly name is on the night's Plutonian shore. Quoth the raven, Nevermore. Much I marveled this ungainly fowl to hear discourse so plainly, though it answers little meaning, little relevancy bore. For we cannot help agreeing that no living human being ever yet was blessed with seeing bird above his chamber door. Bird or beast above the sculptured bus above his chamber door, with such name as Nevermore. But the raven, sitting lonely on the placid bus, spoke only that one word. As if his soul in that one word he did outpour. Nothing further than he uttered, not a feather than he fluttered, till I scarcely more than muttered. Other friends have flown before, on the morrow he will leave me, as my hopes have flown before. Then the bird said, Nevermore. Startled at the stillness broken by reply so aptly spoken. Doubtless, said I, what it utters is its only stock in store. Caught from some unhappy master whom unmerciful disaster followed fast and followed faster till his songs one burden bore, till the dirges of his hope that melancholy burden bore of never, never more. But the raven still beguiling all oh, my sad soul into smiling, straight I wheeled a cushioned seat in front of bird and bus and door. Then upon the velvet sinking, I betook myself to linking, fancy unto fancy, thinking what, this ominous bird of yore, what, this grim, ungainly, ghastly, gaunt, and ominous bird of yore, meant in croaking. Nevermore. This I sat engaged in guessing, but no syllable expressing, to the fowl whose fiery eyes now burned into my bosom's core. This and more I sat divining, with my head at ease reclining, on the cushion's velvet lining, that the lamp lighted gloated o'er. But whose velvet violet lining with the lamp light gloating o'er? She shall press, ah, nevermore. Then methought the air grew denser, 
perfumed from an unseen censer, swung by seraphim whose footfalls tinkled on the tufted floor. Wretch, I cried, thy god had lent thee, by these angels he had sent thee, respite, respite, and nepenthe from thy memories of Lenore. Quaff, oh quaff this nepenthe, and forget this lost Lenore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Prophet, said I, thing of evil, prophet still, if bird or devil, whether tempter sent or whether tempest tossed, the here ashore, desolate yet all undaunted, on this desert land enchanted, on this home by horror haunted, tell me truly, I implore, is there, is there a bomb in Gilead? Tell me, tell me, I implore. Quoth the raven, nevermore, prophet, said I, thing of evil, prophet still, if bird or devil, by that heaven that bends above us, by that god we both adore, tell this soul with sorrow laden, if within the distant Aden it shall clasp a sainted maiden whom the angels named Lenore, clasp a rare and radiant maiden whom the angels named Lenore, quoth the raven, nevermore. Be that word our sign of parting, bird or fiend, I shrieked up starting, get thee back into the tempest and the night's plutonian shore, leave no black plume as a token of that lie thy soul hath spoken, leave my loneliness unbroken, quit the bust above my door, take thy beak out from my heart, and take thy form off from my door. Quoth the raven, nevermore, and the raven, Never flitting, still is sitting, still is sitting on the pallet, bust of palace, just above my chamber door. And his eyes have all the seeming of a demon's that is dreaming, and the lamplight o'er him streaming, throws his shadow on the floor. And my soul from out that shadow that lies floating on the floor shall be lifted nevermore. Never This concludes the Crystal Ray Podcast Halloween Special. Special thanks to Mrs. Caps, the Crystal Ray Choir, and the Crystal Ray Guitar Class. And don't forget to tune in to the podcast next week. If you dare. <laughs> this is the podcast, Crystal Ray. I think that I was born to stop my face with candy corn. This is the podcast, Crystal Ray. And if we all survive, I guess I'll see you on the podcast next week. <laughs> <laughs>